Madhouse Radio, your home to everything biker, biker news and discussions of the day, and now, the Motorcycle Madhouse Mayhem Evening Show with James Hollywood Machikari, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, only on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all major podcasting platforms. Bookmark Motorcycle Madhouse Radio on your favorite mobile app now. Rock on. Welcome to the show. Look what I got. I got me a guest. I got a talker. I got a co-host. Maybe we're trying her out for the show today. I don't know, guys. You're going to have to let me know if she does good on this because this is going to be the 7 p.m. Central Standard Time show over on Spotify and all our good stuff, all our radio programs. So, She is trying out for the host position, and, you know, everybody knows China now. She got a big mouth. It's like when she talks, you know, the nails against the board. Rude! It's like she never shuts up, so I figured, okay, you know, what better person to get on the show than somebody who don't shut up? You know, I always know when I go into her work and people, you know, walk in, I'll just stand back and... They'll try to talk. They'll try to get a word in. But, but... you can't get a word in because I always interrupt when people are talking to me. <laughs> yes, she, yes, she does. Just like that. And it's like, dude, shut up, man. She is like freaking nonstop, freaking 24-7 thinking she's on acid or something. Uh, it's one of them things with her. But, hey, we got to give her a shot. So let's welcome her to the show. China Da, how you doing? How you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, we'll see how much uh, fine I'm doing after this uh, recording here. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> this show is going to be a lot different than the Biker News shows. Again, it's going to be on 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, YouTube and Facebook. You're getting a little listen in on uh, how the program might go. You know, we're going to have to fine tune it, tweak it the whole nine yards. But we're not just going to be talking about biker related stuff on the show. We're going to be covering everything. And, uh, you know, if she works out, well, you know, it might work out for the show. If not, I'll hire somebody else. (laughs) Okay, now that's rude. (laughs) A little bit, a little bit. Uh, But I think the first topic that I wanted to cover on this show and get China Dow's input on, you know what everybody's talking about. You know, let's just... uh, face it right now but the COVID-19 and how it's affected everybody personally as well as businesses something I know a lot of bikers are talking about but uh, give us some thoughts just your initial thoughts on you know COVID-19 and this is the one by the way that said I was blowing it out of proportion I just got to put it out there when this first started I you know I think it was in January no, I kept it was March ma- no yeah, no it was March I think it was February February. We'll just go meet in the middle. All right, fine. <laughs> but anyway, I kept on saying, you know what? We got to get supplies. They say ain't looking good. This might not be a good thing. And God forbid she... you run out of toilet paper. Oh, my God. That first week, everybody was freaking out. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, she kept on saying, well, you're just overblowing this, doing that. You're, you know, you're getting paranoid. And, uh, you know, let's turn the mic over to her, uh, smart ass. All right, so you weren't getting paranoid, okay? At least in the beginning, it was a little crazy with everybody buying all the toilet paper and all the water and all that. I mean, that was a little crazy because the stores didn't shut down. Well, yeah, true enough, true enough, but because everybody were, made a rush. They were considered essential businesses like me. I mean, I'm at a gas station. We were considered an essential employee. So, you know, I've had to work through this whole thing, which every now and again, I wish I didn't have to, but I did. Well, that was one of the things that freaked me out at the beginning. It was like, man, you're going to bring that crap home to me. And everybody knows, you know, I got the underlying condition. So do you. Uh, And it was like, dude, you know, it was like uh, you made the sign of the cross around her. You didn't want to touch her. You know, I didn't get laid for a long time, you know. <laughs> and it was like, yeah, stay over there, man. You know, you got cooties or something. Is that why we're in separate rooms for a while? Oh, my God. I wouldn't go near her. <laughs> you know, that's how paranoid I was because my epilepsy is pretty bad if, you know, I got that. It's pretty bad. And to catch something like that, it was like, hey, 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 whoa. You know what I mean? I better go get me an 18-year-old blonde where that don't affect me. 
rude. <laughs> Do you share? <laughs> yeah, you'd probably get her off better than I ever could. Uh, but Anywho. anyway, how was it at first at your work? Because you were an essential employee. Well, at first in my work, they really didn't do much about it. And then all of a sudden I come into work and there's this big, huge sheet of plexiglass in front of the registers. Now, does that help out at all? In my opinion, being that our our registers are so far, the, the, the countertop is so wide, I'd say it's about two and a half foot wide away from the customers to begin with, which obviously is not the six feet distance. But the plexiglass, I personally think it does help to a point. Because then when they're talking to us, they're not spitting on us. <laughs> well, at first, uh, that plexiglass only came down a little bit. And I think I brought that up to you. I was like, well, what the hell is this going to do? Yeah, the, at first, when they first installed it, I actually stood on the side where the customers stand. And the plexiglass was basically touching my spikes. It was above my head. So for shorter customers, when the shorter customers came in, it didn't block them at all. Right, right. So then we brought it to the attention of our manager, and the manager contacted the GM. She came in, and then they ended up putting a new plexiglass, which was lowered, which you can just barely slide a case of beer under. Right. Well, you know, when it first started off, people started saying, well, this is just a flu. They're overreacting. People uh, are actually still saying it. Right, right. What do you think? You think uh, people were re overreacting? Overreacting as far as the sickness itself? No. But overreacting as far as going on a shopping frickin' spree for toilet paper and water, I think that was going a little far. Right, right. Well, you know what? How did everybody, the customers and all that stuff, react to it? Um, a lot of the customers, because my work never enforced for people to wear masks in it. And as of right now, um, employees, as of three weeks ago, are forced to wear masks. But customers, it says it is requested, but not required. Well, it's gotten so bad around here. And we're in Illinois, man. We're behind uh, communist lines right here. We got prick in the office as i call them pricksters this last night but he's a prick to me you know how all them damn liberal democrats think uh and she's gonna be like what are you talking politics you know they can't stand when they i talk politics but it you know what i think that has to do with everything going on right now with COVID 19 the democrats are showing their uh they want to show you how long their peckers are uh they got all the power on you I think, because uh, they got us broken up in, uh, what, five counties? Five counties in Illinois. Yeah, well, five sections. Sections. Yeah. And if it reaches a certain point, next thing you know, you got to go shut down, do this and that. I bet you after November 3rd, they're going to freaking wide open everything. You know, what's funny is I, I'd say about more than half the customers that are coming into the gas station are saying the same thing, that as of November 3rd, this will, like, be last week's news, and nobody will be having to deal with masks or anything, and after, like, Thanksgiving, they're saying that the kids will be able to go back to school without masks. I mean, that's all I've been hearing every day at work. Well, actually, with our kid, he's going in the senior year. I actually feel sorry for him because he's not going to be able to enjoy everything that we did as seniors. Uh, but we are actually doing uh, that homeschooling stuff. Yeah, our son, being a senior, which I'm very sad about, is doing the remote learning. Um, I wish he could go back to school, but between him and I, <laughs> uh, it's... Not even exciting for me to have to go to work. I mean, I wear my mask, wash my hands, use hand sanitizer like it's going out of style. But we can't take any chances because there are the idiots that go to school that they're not going to keep the mask on. They're going to take it off. They're going to lick their hands, wipe it on. I mean, they're stupid people. Well, it really don't affect kids. It's bringing that, ho that crap home. Well, that yeah, that's like the biggest concern, you know. The kids can come home, go to school, and then, you know, even people are saying now that the kids are going to go back to school, which I guess I've seen it in a few different schools in different areas, that within two weeks of the kids going back to school, they end up shutting down. Right. Well, you know what? How was the lockdown the first month here in Illinois? Oh, my God. It sucked. Only basically left the house to go to work. 
Right. Well, I know I was bitching a lot because I didn't get to go to the gym. They closed my gym down. Uh, it was pretty boring, man. I was stuck here with her all day. It was like, <laughs> you know what? She's cool, but, you know, give me some space, man. I need my space. It's like, you know, you, like I said, nails on the board, man. It's like nonstop talking. You That's know? because I had nobody else to talk to. It was either you or our kid. <laughs> <laughs> Or, you know, video chatting with our daughter, but then I, drama. Oh, my God. <laughs> my daughter up in Whitewater, she just got the Hometown Hero Award. Boy, am I a proud uh, dad right there. You know, it's great that uh, she didn't end up being like me, uh, but uh, she's a really uh, smarticle, as we say around here. So congrats, Brittany. Not to mention that even though they didn't have graduation, she just got her master's. Oh, yeah, she got her master's. And one thing I was upset about with these colleges, now everybody knows that I hate colleges because they uh, teach that liberal BS crap. Uh, but uh, I thought she was going to have to pay for everything, even though she was going online. They were charging her all kinds of fees. That was ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Every time you turn around, she's mad talking about this fee and that fee and another fee and it's like why are you charging them a book fee if you're having everything online <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and you know what's even worse about her okay she is more drama than mama i can tell you that you know yeah, it's like is. every freaking hour on the hour it's like ma i can't sleep my cat you, know, you like... want to buy a cat <laughs> <laughs> she keeps knocking over the water you know i know a lot of you bikers out there have kids but uh wow that's all i can say is wow <laughs> this one 24 hours a day and now you know what she's gonna watch their show or hear the show and she's gonna be crying to mama that i was making fun of her yeah, most likely. I'm going to hear it. <laughs> You're talking about a kid. I bought a car. What was it, about two years ago for her? Yeah. I bought her first car. She's been driving. And the next thing you know, hey, Daddy, I, I, I need a backup camera because I have anxiety. It's like, what are you talking about? You've been driving for two years. Why don't you look over your damn shoulder? Well, I'm going to have anxiety. I'm driving here and there. I'm too short. I'm too short. Now, you know, I bought the damn camera. So come on over, you know, I'll install it. Well, Wisconsin says that if I come to Illinois. I have to quarantine for 10 to 14 days. So she listens. It's like. <laughs> she hasn't been home since this shit started. <laughs> It's like, what kind of kid did I raise here? Why are you so scared? You know, you're going to come over. Who's going to get you? Did it sample? And uh, what's even funnier is her boss has even told her, what I don't know won't hurt me. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I got a little scared with her. She works in that old folks home, man, the old fogies home. Yeah, she works in a senior living facility as the activities director. Sounds like a cruise thing. And, well, you know, <laughs> you got that's hit the COVID's hit them pretty damn hard. Yeah, they actually have the second floor of the senior living facility all for COVID patients. Man. <laughs> and employees have tested positive for COVID. Our daughter, luckily, has had to been tested three times now and all came back negative. Right. And it's like, you know what? You still worry and stuff uh, about, you know, she's around this type. And, you know, they can't get the numbers right at all when it comes to COVID. I, you know what? You can die in an airplane crash and listed as COVID-19. Very true. <laughs> I actually heard that from a state trooper. Car accident, there was a DOA, and it was one of the things listed for his death was COVID. You know what? That's the one thing I hate about her damn job. I talk to lots of police officers. Yeah, they come in and... They like my coffee. And they, well, yeah, they, that's because they don't work. <laughs> but, you know, I, you know, I'll walk up there, chill, and, you know, say hi to her. Next thing you know, the cops are pulling up. I'm walking away. They're giving you that hard-ass look. You know, it's like, man, dude, screw you, Leo. You know, I didn't do nothing. <laughs> you know, they just look me up and down. Well, between uh, the town we live in... The county we live in and the state, they've all visited. Yeah, true enough. <laughs> they've all been there. Yeah, true enough, true enough. But I gotta be nice. Well, yeah, you they've gotta be nice. They've never done me wrong well, yet. You <laughs> and say, I get a lot of info out of them, too. Yeah, say that next time they uh, pull you over and they think you're me. 
No, that was only in Bartlett. <laughs> <laughs> they pulled her over, pulled the gun out, the whole nine yards. Because they thought he was driving and not me, and I almost peed myself. <laughs> With a baby in the back seat. Yeah, she had a baby in the back seat, and, uh, you know, because they got me on a gang uh, task force list and stuff. I don't think they like my uh, past from... Uh, Growing up in Chicago, do you? <laughs> no, I don't think so, but that's why we actually made sure that the vehicle was in my name so they wouldn't think it was you. You know, it had nothing to do with the biker stuff. It had everything to do with the gang I was in. And I'm, what, 47 almost? You, you November know. 5th. November 5th. Don't forget to wish me happy birthday. You can send some checks. You know, I'll be happy. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. Check, like a younger me. <laughs> No, one that don't talk as much. You know, I like the ones that shut up. Well, good luck there. <laughs> but anyway, I'm 47 years old, and they still got me on a gang task force fucking uh, watch from when I was freaking 15 years old. <laughs> they still got me on that list. It's like, are you shitting me? Hey, how does a brother get off this thing, man? Uh, then it didn't help you. I did some other stuff, but uh, yeah, they pulled her right over. <laughs> yeah, approaching, hand on gun unbuckled it and everything and are asking me to roll my window down and standing far enough away that I could see that their hand is on their piece and yeah I, I was about two seconds shy of literally peeing in the driver's seat of my car. Then she comes home crying and whining. I'm literally tears man. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with you? Well they just did that. I was like so they do that to me all the damn time. You know at least they didn't throw you on the ground uh, you know like me most of the time but uh, yeah she came home. Where are you going? What are you doing? I'm just trying to take my kid home. We just <laughs> Left Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how aggressive the cops here are in uh, Illinois. Uh, Chicago, the cops are pretty, uh, you know, as long as you give them their peace, they're pretty, you know, decent. But once you get in the sh uh, the suburb area, that gang uh, list gets really freaking bad and screws you up. Uh, but back to COVID-19. Uh, did you know anybody who caught it? No. No? No. No, I did. No. Uh, yeah, you know, well, Frankie, man, I, you know, you know, Santa Claus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and, you know, he's going through uh, rehab right now. Uh, I guess it destroys your lungs pretty bad. Uh, also, his daughter had it, but she didn't uh, show the symptoms and stuff. Uh, but do you think that, you know, let's, you know, before we go into the next segment, do you think uh, this is going to be over with come uh, the election time? Honestly, I really think it is. Rock on. Well, we're going to take a uh, little commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to be talking about riots and all that other good jive with China uh, Dow. I was going to call her Chinatown, but uh, China Dow. <laughs> it's one of them things, man. We 420 in it up here. Uh, <laughs> hey, if you ever see China Dow high, it's You're going to laugh your asses off, man. Especially since I can't drink no more. Yeah, she can't drink. She, you know, she went and got... Uh, Too drunk. She got smashed the other week. And you know what? It gets... When I tell you, she talks a lot now. When she's drunk, it's like, dude, I want to just freaking throw her off a cliff or something it's like that. It's 10 times worse. You know, I, I'm a guy who smokes 420. I don't drink. And then you got somebody, you know, you know, the drunks come home and then they just won't shut up and it kills your buzz. It's not cool, man. I really don't appreciate that stuff. So she went, got drunk, and then tore up her stomach. And my esophagus. Had her in the damn ER. I'm sitting there until 4 o'clock in the freaking morning like, you know what, you dumb bitch. And it's like... I have ulcer problems for <laughs> 10 years now. Yeah, but I'm sitting up there. There's COVID all over the night. You know what? When you were in a damn hospital, I had to leave. I had to go out to the freaking truck. I said, enough of this crap. Because they brought in a broad that tried to hang herself and she wouldn't shut up crying. Why didn't she just leave me? Leave me there. And I look at her and I'm like, you know what the freak did you get me into here, and he man? And he leaves and I gotta hear it. Yeah, better you than me, man. <laughs> Screw that stuff, man. You know what? I really don't look upon anybody good that tries to commit suicide because, you know what? There's a lot of little babies, a lot of kids that want to live, that are fighting cancer, you know, everybody at St. Jude's. And I think it's weak. 
you know, that's the way I always look at it. Sometimes she gets mad at me because of that uh, viewpoint, but I think it's weak, man. Uh, but anyway, let's go to the commercial break, and we'll be back for the next segment. Let us know how uh, you're liking the show, this format. This, again, it will be on Spotify, iTunes, all that. Well, it's Apple Podcasts now. Uh, but that it will be our 7 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time show. But we're just premiering it all over the platforms uh, today. That way you guys can let us know how she's doing. Here we go. Hey, guys. Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market, apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. We have ignition. Slay with the devil, die with the devil. What's up, everyone? Welcome back, man. Don't forget to go visit BaggerSyndicateCycle.com. Get your hats and your t-shirts, man. Get these nice white boy hats, man. I just got my peckerwood hat in, and a lot of people don't know what a peckerwood is, but I'm a proud-ass white boy. But anyway, we're going to be talking about uh, the riots going on around the country. You believe that Joe Biden actually came out today and said... It's Donald Trump's fault. While these idiots for the last three months, some of their staff were saying bail these people out of Minnesota. What do you think about the riots going on? Uh, I'd like to know what the main purpose of most of these are because some of them don't even fight the purpose. Well, you know, everybody knows I'm a proud supporter of Kyle uh, Rittenhouse. I believe he's a hero. 17-year-old kid, he was getting attacked. Next thing you know, he popped some of them, man. And he popped some that didn't have the best uh, records. Do you always notice that uh, the Antifas and all them on the left, they all have uh, criminal records? Just like Leo, man, with the sexual abuse crap. That stuff grosses me out. <laughs> but these riots are all in Democratic cities. Now, China Dow can tell you how it is living in Chicago, living in Illinois, uh, and how bad it has gotten. You know, uh, that's one of the reasons why we moved up to northern Illinois is because, you know, I grew up in Chicago, born and raised, uh, lived there all those years. I grew up on the wrong side of the tracks, according to you, in Schaumburg. Yeah, she grew up in the freaking, she had a silver spoon in her mouth. I told you, it wasn't me, it was my dad. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to get the kids out of the city because it was just getting bad. Uh, but the riots really hit Chicago. Yeah, they did. Like, yeah. I know my, I, I have family that live on Michigan Avenue. And then they're really in one of them tall buildings near the, you know, really close to the top. And they walk out of their building one day and they turn to their right. Looked like hell froze over. Turn to their left. Hell froze over again. It, it was insane. Windows busted. Cars busted. Everything. Cars flipped over. Fires. Well, you know what's uh, sad about that is Chicago, I love... Uh... I love home. I used to be, when I didn't see the Sears Tower, I used to get homesick. You, you used to tell me enough of that. But, uh, you know, it's one of the most beautiful cities on the face of the earth. And they turned it into a hellhole. And they just let them do that. Uh, the mile, if you guys don't know what the magnificent uh, mile is, that is the premier shopping in Chicago. They were breaking out windows. You know, the cops couldn't do nothing because the damn uh, mayor, Beetle uh, Juice, man, she ugly, man. She does look like Beetle Juice. She Beetle Juice and Oh, I got the man. big eyes. Uh. <laughs> and what's even worse about her, she's letting these people riot, tear everybody else's houses down. But when they went to go riot in front of her house, she had it blocked off with cops and said, I have to protect my family's uh, safety. Talking about being a hypocrite. That's why I do not like leftist Democrats, man. I think they're a waste of space. I think their ideology has done nothing but tear this country apart. And it's tearing at the fabric of uh, society. And I don't understand why blacks still vote for them. You know, they are the party of slavery, they are the party of Jim Crow, and they've done nothing uh, 
any good for the African Americans. So I sometimes I just don't understand it. Uh, but Portland's going into the hundredth day of riding. Could you imagine trying to raise a kid in that? That would be extremely insane. Especially if my kid wanted to get involved, which he hasn't. No, our Thank kids ain't like God. that. I kick him right in the ass. But there are families even in our town where people are getting involved. Right. There are people that went to high school with our daughter that have been involved and taken down by county cops. Mm-hmm. What, what do you think the problem is with kids these days? Because they're, they're whiners. You know, that I look at them like little crybabies when they go out to these protests and stuff. No street smarts. Where else do you think we, the parents nowadays went wrong? Well, we got our butts kicked when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I will say we've never smacked our kids. Never even spanked our kids. And all I had to do was look at them and they stopped. <laughs> <laughs> you just go. No, I spanked them, uh, what was it, a couple times, and after that, they never freaking did another, they never moved. No, but everybody's all into this time out. Does those work, do they even work? Because they don't work on our grandkids. No, man. <laughs> uh, I got my my grandkids coming over, man, and now I got five grandbabies. And, you know, one of them's uh, they got spina bifida, so they got to take him to the hospital and stuff all the time. So we got the four girls, and here Pop is. Oh my God! I call him Papa Pop, uh, Papa's Posse, and uh, she just had twins. My daughter. Uh, so we're watching twins. I'm watching my little freaking, you know, Evie girl. I call her because she's my mini me. Uh, and uh, China Doll stole my oldest granddaughter. She won't even come near me all the time. You know, only when she wants some money from Papa. But uh, other than that, she's attached to her. Why I got the other ones. Uh, but it was insane. It was a long day. <laughs> and we're doing it again on the 15th. Yeah, you know what? Papa's too old for that <laughs> crap sometimes. Uh, and but, he don't do diapers. No. Nah, but he will feed them. He just don't do diapers. No. Have I, I never even changed my own kids' diapers, man. That was a woman's job to me. <laughs> he actually never did. Not no. one. No. Not one. No. No. I'm proud of my record. So for all you guys out there that uh, you know let get led around by your pecker by an old lady to tell you to freaking change diapers, I feel for you, man. I really do. Uh, but how are the kids nowadays coming up being treated compared to what we were? The bullying is worse. As far as I mean, do you mean that or what exactly you mean? Well, why do you think they're out there acting a fool? Because they're listening to other people. Too much of this social media crap, and half the time you don't even know if the social media is true or false. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And every time, I mean, God, even the seven-year-old, our granddaughter, she's all up on her phone. I mean, she's playing games. She's not on social media. If she is, I'd kill her. But she, I mean, too many people are, like, listening to this story and that story and not getting the real story. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I'm seeing. Right, right. Like, I've heard six different stories about the guy in Kenosha. Well, the guy in Kenosha had a felony sex worn out. He had a knife in his hand. And you know how I am about uh, sexual uh, things. I believe you go medieval on their asses, so I didn't yeah, feel sorry did, for that. But, dude. The, but there's people out there right now that said he had no weapon whatsoever. Well, all they have to do is watch the video and see it themselves. That's the, like uh, <laughs> Kyle Rittenhouse. But there are also videos out there where they've been manipulated mm -hmm. to where you can't see a weapon. Well, yeah, that's the mainstream media that way. Kyle Rittenhouse, I actually put it on my uh, private social media page. Uh, the guy that charged him pulled the freaking nine millimeter out of his waistband and well, he got shot. That's the way it works. Uh, I just don't see how these people support these guys. They have a long ass rap sheet. This guy in Kenosha with the sexual, uh, he's being charged for rape. And then the dude out in uh, Minnesota, and you know what's funny when I talk about this stuff? Um, they call me racist all the time. Why? They got no better thing to call me than wait racist because they don't got facts on their side. George Floyd had a uh, fatal overdose of uh, fentanyl in his system. They said he was going to die that night. That's why when he was in the car saying he couldn't breathe and to get him out of the car, next thing you know, they get him out of the car. And, you know, the autopsy even uh, reveals that. 
Uh, but then you got the competing one again with the family, and that one I don't believe. And somewhere they're saying they're possibly going to put up a bum 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 statue for him. Yeah. yeah if the they hell? put a statue up to him, man, it's time to get out there and uh, take them statues down. They did it to the Confederate memorials. Uh, if you notice, it's all in the freaking Democrat-run cities. Uh, but, you know, we've been, uh, you know, blessed enough to be out of Chicago. It's just so sad to see a great city like that burned down. I remember taking you out there all the time because she gets amazed with me. Chicago is huge. I'm I can't find huge. my way out of a wet paper bag out in Chicago, but this one, turn right, turn left, turn right. Oh, I know okay. Chicago like the back of my hand and, you know, everything from the north side, the south side, west side, man, is like, I know where I'm at. Wrigleyville. Uh, yeah, Wrigleyville, you know. You, ju you just don't want to go south on Wrigleyville, okay? Over on Clark Street, stay away from going south on there, you know. The Blue Oysters. <laughs> <laughs> That's about what you're going to get over uh, going south on Clark Street in uh, Wrigleyville. So you do have to know where you're at when it comes to Chicago. Next thing you know, you, you know, you see, you know, people that are not from Chicago. Oh, there's some bikers. Well, they're not dressing like that for uh, being a biker. Okay, they some freaks out there. But seeing, yeah, I like me some freaks. <laughs> I'm talking, they freaky out there, man. That's all right. You know, they let them be. They pulling on each other's schlongs and all that stuff. Nasty, man. Hey, Nasty. let them be. They're not bothering you. <laughs> she's she's a little more progressive than I am when it comes to stuff like that. Uh, but burning down Chicago and now, you know, 100 days out of Portland. And now he's coming up because the polls are saying that it's not doing good for the Democrats. All, all of a sudden, it's Trump's fault. While the dude was out here saying, I'll send in the National Guard. I'll get this done. Uh, as of tomorrow's, uh, you know, preview of this, he's going to be in Kenosha. He's dropping right down in the middle of the riot zone, man. He's got some cojones, man. Cojones. Uh, Let's see how that goes. He'll just shoot him. <laughs> Here's a guy who walked over to DMZ with none of his security, and he shook hands with uh, Kim Jong-un. You know, he's got some balls, this guy. Uh, but what's even funnier, you know, people are calling all his supporters racist this, racist that. But then a, a video shows up in 1999 of Jesse Jackson uh, giving him an award for all the work he's done with minorities. Uh, but I just think the rioting and all that's got out of control because these people won't stop them. Well, heck, all I was hearing at, on Saturday night at work was uh, Rockford, State Street, boarded up, Walmart, Target, Myers, everything was getting boarded up and closing at 1 o'clock in the afternoon because they were told people were going to come down and burn shit down. No, oh, I was waiting for that. I was going to actually go cover that and probably get into the mix. <laughs> I but, was the fun, but the funniest, you know, rumors have it, the guy that owns Target said, burn it down, I can rebuild. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I think a lot of people are getting sick of it now. you got a lot of these patriots out there, that 17-year-old Kyle uh, Rittenhouse, free Kyle, baby. Uh, they're out there fighting back now. I think it was, uh, you know, in Sturges, they started kicking on them. And in Colorado, they just pounded on them. Uh, I think those little kids are getting a, a taste of what real life's all about. Yeah. But the problem with that is, is, uh, sometimes they go a little too far too. Who? Kids! Well, the kids always go a little too far. You know, they're meeting up with what's going on with these Patriots. The Patriots are putting them back in line. <laughs> politics <laughs> politics you know it's not actually politics it has to do with a bunch of young brats running around in black freaking uh, outfits acting like they're revolutionaries tearing crap up throwing stuff through windows and i think people are just sick hey, of what it. happened to the good old days with Maltov cocktails <laughs> oh yeah true true enough yeah we used to you know utilize you know allegedly allegedly allegedly, allegedly utilize those allegedly. in the neighborhood when we needed no, to no, no, proof. <laughs> no proof i don't know what the hell you're talking about i don't either i just uh, i just heard you know i just heard <laughs> heard about it but the town we're in they're all freaking getting ready man they you know it's being set around town yeah come over here we'll start shooting your asses you know what's funny is illinois and, and I heard this, 
you know, because I work at a gas station, from an officer. Um, did you know that Illinois has this law that if, let's say, one of these people come into your house, if they do not have a weapon, you cannot go at them with a weapon. That's bullshit. I'm shooting You can get arrested if you shoot somebody that enters your house in Illinois if they are unarmed. Now, they also said that if they come in with a bat, well, you could probably shoot them or go at them with a bat, but if they come in with fists only, you can only go at them with your fists or else you'd go to jail and they'd get away with breaking into your house. I guess I'm going to jail because I'm shooting them right between the eyes. There I just no... <laughs> thought it was really weird because I always thought if somebody in, in you know came into your house, whether whatever they had, even if it were, I mean, okay, fists, okay, let's say they had no weapon. They're getting into your house. They're coming into your place. You have family. Why can't you kill them? Because Illinois has a law that says you can't. See, the problem with Illinois, and it's real funny, is... Most of Illinois is red, except damn freaking Chicago, Champaign, and these uh, big cities where these dumb idiots run. And they run a rough shot over the rest of the state, and they pass these stupid laws. Now, I know a lot of listeners out there are going to say, yeah, somebody comes in the house, we're shooting them dead. And <laughs> Which everybody here in town says all the time, because it's like, they, they're like, well, if these rioters come into, the, come into our town, they're stupid, because almost every homeowner in this town has a gun of some, so, of some sort. We live in the country now, uh, out in the boonies, and yeah, it's not going to be played that well. Uh, you guys probably seen a video uh, that I threw up there talking about uh, how Hollywood's uh, misconception of bikers and stuff, and I went through Beloit. Beloit's the nearest big town from us. And they got all that Black Lives Matter crap up there. Uh, all but, Lives Matter. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, if they ever came into this little town, they're out there with their AR-15s and all that ready to go. <laughs> so, I mean, because, like, at least 80% of the people in this town are hunters. Yeah. <laughs> now, you brought up Black Lives Matter. All what, Lives Matter. What do you think of that? All Lives Matter. What do you think I, about I, the organization I'm, Black Lives Matter? Me, you hear it all the time. Fuck them, fuck them. And it's like, you know. I, I don't know why everybody always has to say something about race. I mean, my life matters. Your life matters. My kid's life matters. The guy, I mean, I ain't going to say the guy next door because he's a douche. But, you know, I think everybody's life matters. Why Why do they got to be pointed on, on race? Well, you know, because it's a white guy killing a black guy, but the statistics... And how many black guys have killed white guys? No, there you go. And, you know, actually, cop shootings are more prolific uh, against whites than they are blacks. Why? <laughs> that's the that's the stuff they won't tell people, uh, because it doesn't fit their narrative. You got a bunch of white liberals that are rich sitting on the coast trying to tell us how to live our lives okay so if it was a black guy shooting a black guy that's okay well you know what you brought up a good point because most black on black crime is what at 90 percent or something like that it something. is you go on how is south side and the west side of chicago what you, i don't want to go there you might as well drop a damn bomb on that side i of don't chicago. i don't even want to go there you know, uh, I took her on the L. She's all freaking out. We call it the L out here. And, you know, you got all the freaking dummies out there being stupid and stuff. And she's all freaked out. And it's like, I don't you... like the L. Yeah. It's like, what the hell are you freaked out I, about? I, I won't go on that by myself. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't let her on that damn thing by herself. <laughs> I'll take but... the train, but I'm not going on the L. All the, the violent crime is coming from the south and the west side. You know, you're saying Black Lives Matter, and, you know, one of the things she hears and you guys hear is like, okay, well, when you guys come together, figure out if your lives matter without shooting each other, then come back and I might give a crap. But the black people are destroying black businesses. And why? Well, it doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, you you live in that neighborhood and you're going to go and blow up and burn down a a business that's in your neighborhood that's owned by a black person why you know if i have any black listeners listen right now they're probably calling me racist they uh, shouldn't i mean I, I i'm i guess you could say i'm stupid because that's why i'm asking why 
Well, you know, that's why I'm hoping that uh, some of our black viewers actually answer that question for us. If, you know, like in Chicago on the west south side, you got 38 uh, shootings in one freaking day on the weekend. You know, you can get up to 100 shootings on the south and west side, a couple people dead. Uh, so if Black Lives Matter, why in the hell should I care if they don't matter to you? Well, I mean, if Black Lives Matter, okay, fine, yeah, you matter, but can I walk around with a sign that says White Lives Matter? No, because then you're a neo-Nazi, then you're a racist. But I'm not racist. Well, the, anything that has to do with White Lives Matter, you're a racist. Don't you know? That's the way they look at you. But that ain't right. Well, no, it's not right. Until people start fighting back on that notion, uh, you know... I think people are just too scared to fight back nowadays. I think they're weak. Uh, you know, when somebody said, you know, when people on my program and in the comments, well, you're racist, that's the best you got. Do you have an argument for me being racist? Are you contesting the facts that I'm putting out? Is that why I'm racist? It don't fit your narrative? Uh, the stuff I speak of is based in facts. Debate me on the facts. Prove him wrong. <laughs> Prove me wrong. But what do you guys think about that uh, with all the BLM, all the riots going, and how it's affecting your family? Do you think it was just built up over this COVID-19 lockdowns? Let us People know. People had nothing better to do. Right. Uh, we're going to go back uh, to a commercial break again with uh, Bagger Syndicate Cycles. And then our final segment, we're going to get into some really interesting stuff that people ask me about. So... Stick around. We got uh, China Dow over here. How she doing as a co-host? Let me know, guys. Hey, guys. Carrie here from Beggar Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. As defined in the American Heritage Dictionary, second college edition, the noun rock is defined as a relatively hard, naturally occurring material of mineral How origin. You guys doing? You a naturally it. formed mineral. That's not rock. Play with the devil, die with the devil. Now, back to good, wholesome, politically correct entertainment. <laughs> All right, don't forget to pound rock on in that uh, comment section, boy. And uh, go over to the support store. You get your own uh, pound rock on merchandise. We got embroidered hats the whole nine yards. So welcome back from that commercial break. How's the uh, show going so far? Yes, topics that we're going to be exploring on the 7 o'clock uh, p.m. Central Standard Time show over on Spotify Apple Podcasts and all the major ones. So get on over there, check it out. Now, this next segment, the last one that we're going to do, we're going to try to do about an hour show. Uh, everybody said, I want to do it more, longer, longer. And eventually, we're going to be getting some guests on this show where they call in and stuff and uh, ask old China Dow questions, me questions. Don't be freaks. Don't be freaks. Why not? Not cool. <laughs> Why not? I like freaks. Told you. But, you know, I think this is going to be a personal segment for myself, uh, at, you know, answering some questions that I have gotten from the listenership that I really haven't answered over the air before. But uh, you know what? My email is full of stuff. And uh, one uh, personal subject matter, because a lot of people seen the newspapers around here and we're asking about my son. Uh, my son, Jimmy, he's what, 22 years old? 23. 23. And uh, you, we just actually came back to see him this uh, weekend. Uh, but first they were like... I've seen him in three and a half years. They were like, uh, yeah, that's the first time she's seen him in a while. Uh, but they were like, hey, man, what's up with these newspapers and stuff? And they're mostly around Illinois. Yes, my kid got charged with homicide one, uh, got sentenced to 26 years in, uh, or no, 30 years 30 in prison. 30 years, release date 2047. Yeah, 2047. 
And uh, people were like, you know what? Why are you proud of that? Stuff like that. Well, you got to remember where I come from. And uh, the and I'll talk about a, l- a little background on what happened. But the one thing he didn't do was rat. rat. <laughs> he didn't rat one freaking bit, man. But they all ratted on him. They all went at him. And he still to this day won't freaking say who was involved, any of that stuff. And there's a lot of men in the so-called biker scene that act all tough. They act all tough. And the next thing you know, they're looking at five, ten years, and they're... Spilling their guts. They're spilling their guts. And here is a 20-something-year-old kid went down for the hardest of hard. He's got 100% time. He ain't getting 50 or nope. 80%. It's nope, 100%. 100%. And he stood tall, stood strong. And I think that's why I'm really proud of him. Well, he's the closest kid that I have to me. You know, he was a street kid. Yeah. Big time. Uh, but he stood there and took his uh, sentence like a man. Uh, so... What happened was this. 49-year-old man, a drunk, came over to uh, where he was living. His mother let him in. Next thing you know, he's all over his girlfriend. Now, my son, he's got a short fuse. Big time. (laughs) Like father, like son. He's got a short fuse. And, you know, he's talking all this stuff. He put his hand on his girlfriend and, and this is what, when he was 19 years old? Yep. 19 no, years old. Well, he's been there three and a half years, so right around before he turned 20. Right. Uh, so anyway, my son loses it. 49-year-old freaking drunk coming over, touching. He shouldn't have been there in the first place. So my son beat him down. You know, like anybody would. You guys would, too. And I guess somebody else uh, took a knife and uh, stabbed him in the leg. And that's what uh, went on. Uh, From what I heard, the guy freaking refused medical attention. He later died at the hospital. So they put homicide one on him, where I don't think if he had the right lawyer, he would have got more than manslaughter. Five counts. Five counts they put on his ass, man. They wanted to make sure that shit stuck. Right. Uh, But, you know, I just wanted to answer that freaking question because that's one that lingers all the time. And I'm like, you know what? It's about time I talk about this stuff because this is a different platform, different show. And, you know, you want to be as honest as you can in these segments. That way people know you're real. Uh, But, you know, he's going to be doing time. I think they're uh, moving him uh, to Menard. But he's a hardcore little white boy, and, you know, he kind of freaked you out when you see him for once this time. That's because when I, last time I saw him, he was a tiny little twig. <laughs> he's not so tiny anymore. I mean, he's still short like me, but he ain't no twig. No. and she, it was This one, pull your shirt up, let me see your belly. <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, you doing your freaking burpees and your seals? He says, fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> he gets pissed off playing cards. Yeah, you know, uh, he has, uh, like I said, he has an ang- anger issue, and he was playing spades. Spades, is he can't play dominoes over here. Uh, but he was playing sta- uh, spades. Somebody got stupid, and you know, next he got thing- pissed off. And yeah. next thing you know, he's in the basement. He's in seg, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, but he's a really good kid. And from the, you know, yeah, I feel sorry for the guy's family of the guy who died and stuff. But you know, I'm the still. Guy shouldn't have been there. He shouldn't have been there, and the mother shouldn't have let him in. Now Anne's not the mother, so you no! know. I screwed up uh, in the '90s. You know, playing the wild game back then. It was a different period in the '90s. Let's just say, I had our daughter, March of '97. His son was born July of '97. Hey, you know, I had to have some kind of canoody, but because our next kid wasn't for seven years later, right? So you know what? I went out there, played around, and uh, next thing you know, that happened. And uh, but the mother's a piece of crap. Let this dude in; shouldn't have been there. And this popped off. But I know a lot of guys that would have done the same thing. You'd have gave him a beatdown. You know, you probably wouldn't have gave him a beatdown like he did. But uh, you know, he yeah, just he loses. Him. Yeah, he loses his damn mind, man. <laughs> when he gets going, he just goes, man. Uh, but 
that is the story behind it. It was the personal thing, but I know you guys seen all the newspaper articles and you were like, why this, why that? Which I'm actually surprised they've kind of put two and two together because of the fact that y'all have a different last name. Right. Well, He's got his mommy's name. Well, a lot of people know me out here and, you know, that's where the questions were coming from was uh, from the Illinois area. And please don't think I was his mom. No, you weren't with the mom, no. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm not a bitch all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? She really ain't that much of a bitch. She's actually pretty cool. Uh, I got my bitchy side. You know what I got to do is... crabby all day today. I got to get you your own support merchandise. I got to get Chinatown merchandise so the ladies I thought we there. had some. No, I switched providers, so... What the hell? I got to get some more up So there. I'm the only one that has a Chinatown... Tank top and China doll leggings? No, some other girls got some. I seen well, it, damn one it before I switched it. But. I need a hoodie. <laughs> Somebody buy me a China doll hoodie. But uh, what do you think of, you know, with his mentality compared to these other kids? These other kids don't know the streets. That's, the, that's what I said before. A lot of the kids nowadays are totally not street smart, like at all. Like, I love my son, but he's not street smart. No, he comes up to daddy and mommy. <laughs> no, no, he's mommy's. He's a mommy's he's boy. Mommy's. But when I walk everywhere, he's right next to me. Uh, fangirl. Yeah. <laughs> he's was... been fangirled in front of our son. It was awesome. Oh, my God. What is fangirled? A fan just coming up and acting like a girl. <laughs> yeah. I get that all the time when I'm on the streets. or Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's James Hollywood Machikari. Yeah. It's and a... that was on our next block. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm walking with my kid and I get freaking, you know. Fangirled. Yeah. I get fangirled. I get mugged. It's like, can you sign this? Can you sign that? And it's like, hey, dude, man. You know, Not what like the hell? Not like he's got a Sharpie in his pocket. Right. Maybe I should give you one on a bungee cord. <laughs> right? Uh, but anyway, uh. I know Jimmy, he he was nothing but streets. Like I said, he is the nearest to my personality and to the way I am of any of the kids. Uh, I mean, I will say you've got two other sons, and they're very overprotective of me. Yeah. Well, they know how to take care of mom. Yeah, of course, because I'm awesome. Yeah, you know, they got, <laughs> that, they got that streak in them. And I'm kind of proud that they don't have the street side of things in them. Uh you know, I always talk about my one son. Uh, you keep on screwing around, and we're not going to say what he does. Uh, you're going to be right there you're next, gonna be to, right your next brother, to your brother. And you're going to find out the real freaking deal. Because uh, I'm one of them guys, when they're 18, you're out of my house. See you later. Do your own life. Uh, I mean, we're here for you, but. But, you know, it's time to grow up. Get out of the freaking nest. That's what happened to me, man. I was out at, what, 17? 17. 17 years old? Because you had your daughter at 17. Yeah. And I had to get out there, bust my ass, do my own thing. So uh, it's a lot different with these other brats. And when I see these other brats out there, all the comp like in Walmart, the way these kids are, it's like, really, you got that much disrespect in you? You know, people that are on even my Facebook that I was a kid and uh, they were my elders, I'm still, hey, miss this, Mr. That. Oh, with like your teach old teachers and all that. Yeah. I I've seen you do that in your comments. They'll make a comment about something and you'll come back with Mrs. Whatever. Yeah, Mr. you know, whatever. that's the way I was raised. It was Not like, nowadays. No. Now Nowadays, their kids are calling parents by, like, their friends' parents by their first names. Mm-hmm. See, I grew up in a Latino neighborhood, and then, uh, you know, the Italian stuff in us. So, you know, we're not going to talk about I that. I mean, to time. be honest, um, like, I don't like when my kids' friends call me uh, Mrs. Redden. Why? Because I say that's my mother-in-law. <laughs> I prefer Anne. Well, that's, you know, disrespect. And she, you know what, sometimes she really gets on me. Uh, Cause I call her mama or mommy. Uh, I ain't his mama. Yeah, but it's a you know a street thing, and that's showing respect to a mother. Of yeah, a and kid. that's why I like when my kids' friends just call me mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just don't you know think they understand the world, and I think they're being left behind. Yeah, big time. You know, what do you think should be done as the kids are getting, uh, you know, raised by their parents? It don't take no damn village to raise a kid. It takes parents. Yeah, well, some of these kids, you need a village to raise them. Right. 
Well, you know, for those that are going to come out and talk about my kid, he was this, he's that, uh, you know, his brother and sisters have a hard time with it, but uh, uh, I understand it. And again, I'm, I feel sorry for the freaking guy, but... I know, I know our two uh, don't accept it. Yeah, well, there are more on the liberal side. I don't know what the hell happened. It had to be you. It wasn't what? me. Dude, I am not anything in politics. I'm not even registered to vote. And you're the problem in this country. Ah, it's all electoral college. It has nothing to do with me. What is the electoral college? I don't know. My point being. I told you, I'm <laughs> politics stupid. My point being. I you sit know, here and make fun of Trump saying he looks like a freaking Oompa Loompa with a blonde wig. Come on. Well, you know, at least he's got some nuts, but it's very important. Do you know this? Do you know he's got nuts? Dude, did you see the first lady? You know damn well he has nuts. Anyway. All right, I'll give it to you there. <laughs> I don't care if you got billions of dollars. You don't she got out nuts. For the money. She out for the money. No, she is, money. she's one of the best money. first ladies around, man. She's better than Jackie O, I think. <laughs> but what, you I don't think... like Hillary? Hell no, dude. <laughs> yeah. No, no, your favorite. Reagan. Oh, Reagan. Nancy. No, you know what? I actually think Trump would be better than Reagan. No, you like Nancy. <laughs> and Barbara Bush. Nancy and Barbara are cool, man. Uh, anyway, I think people like China Dow are the problem in this country. Oh, they, put me as a problem. They don't freaking register to vote. They no. don't They don't get into society. Don't they don't care. help this country forward. Don't care because everybody that's in there sucks. Oh, but it didn't suck when you got your, uh, you know. My medical card? Your COVID check. No, I cashed that bitch. <laughs> right. But you know what? I paid bills with it. I didn't really get myself anything. Well, it don't matter. You still cashed that thing. And you're I had no get... choice to cash it. It went directly in my account, and I went, whoa, more money going shopping. Well, you didn't give it back now, did you? Fuck no. There you go. Don't care. It's mine. <laughs> I'll be giving it back at the end of the year when it's on tax time, I'm sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> we all don't know. It's going to happen. We're going to be taxed. Got to include that in your income. Right. Well, you know what? Let's go into the next, the, the final five minutes of this show. Uh, I don't want to. I want it longer. Well, there you go. You know, we're, hey, you're on a test spot here for COVID. Longer? <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, we're going to talk about the new biker scene, man. Do you think the way kids are raised now and they're, they're coming into the scene is like, what the hell is with you kids? It's not even like there are any bikers. N no, no. They think no. a lot different, don't you think? They think very much different. <laughs> well, tell me, tell the audience. Well, I mean, I grew up with it, like with you. I mean, I didn't grow up with any of it, but since you, 25 plus years later, um, it, you know, biker, brotherhood, that's always the first thing, that co family, first thing that comes to mind. What are these new new generation bikers Party! Party! Boobs! That was part of it, yeah, but... But they think that's all of it. Well, they don't know any loyalty. You no, know. because there's too many people telling on people. Yeah, that is... <laughs> yeah. Mm. Shut up. Keep your mouth shut. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. We're going to... That was just a teaser of what's going to be on the next segment... I don't know. What do you guys want to call it if she passes uh, the Hollywood and China Dow evening show? Give me some advice, man, to name this show. Uh, again, this show not, is only going to be available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, MotorcycleMadhouse.com. Uh, this will not be after this show on YouTube or uh, what's it called? Uh, Facebook. So, Again, if you're not on those platforms, you can go on actually on Spotify where they sponsor us. Hit the follow button and you'll know when an episode drops. So with that, I appreciate it. China Doll, say goodbye. Ask, you know, goodbye, beg, China Doll. Oh. <laughs> beg them for a vote for you to be a can, uh, an anchor. Vote here. for me because I rule. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm cuter than him. Well, this is true, man. This is true. <laughs> anyway... Appreciate everything, guys. I'll talk to you later. So you want to know how to support the show? Go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. 
Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news, motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community, motorcycle club editorials and more. And don't forget to visit us on Facebook. Get involved in the conversation. Watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more. Also, we have Instagram. Yes, Instagram. We have material that is not seen anywhere else. So don't forget, get on our platforms, check out your daily biker news. Rock on. Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel top of the notch all about baggers bikers and brotherhood and ladies don't you worry we didn't forget about you check it out at beggars syndicate cycles.com yo show is now available on spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, radio itunes stitcher and more don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't 